I thought I was getting swarmed by fucking diddly Australian bees. This week's movie, Who Am I? Armed with only my smarmy attitude, a small town quickly plays a round of deja vu to teach me a lesson in life, patience, and how to love someone. Stay tuned to find out. You're listening to the Banana Reel Movie Podcast, episode 34. Warning, this show does contain spoilers and coarse language, so you've been forewarned. Hey there, folks. We are the Theatre Gorillas. My name is Carlos. I'm Heath. I'm Dan. I'm Lee. And uh, as usual, we'll just get this out of the way. Uh, you can reach us at Theatre Gorillas for Twitter. Facebook is facebook.com forward slash Theatre Gorillas. If you want to send us an email, it's theatregorillas at gmail.com. And of course, our website, theatregorillas.com, all spelt the UK English way. And of course, if you like the show, please rate us on iTunes because every little bit helps. Damn straight. Damn right. Yeah. Thumbs up on, on uh, YouTube. Oh, oh yes. yeah. I keep forgetting that one. I've got to add that YouTube. to the notes. Yes, we now have the YouTube. Just search for Theta Gorillas on YouTube and you will find us. And uh, the podcast is up there. We have plans for other things, but yes. we'll see how things go first. Mm. Uh, so this week we are looking at Deadpool. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Oh, God, I was <laughs> I, waiting for this for so long. <laughs> <laughs> even, I can't even contain my excitement. Right, so I have not had a chance to see this movie yet, but I will guarantee you Loser. that by the next episode, I will have seen it and I will give my quick review. Yeah, mm. they're, they're really missing the the money that you haven't put towards the uh, film. Yeah, I hear it's yeah. actually really doing really poorly. Mm, yeah, yeah it's so bad. Us. Oh, fuck, man. Where's my wallet? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Run, now, go. <laughs> Okay. Holy <laughs> shit, come back here. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> well, you should have done the... <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of didn't work because the fucking muff muffled everything. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it shit Damn how that, that muff, muff does that? Yeah. Yeah. You got to keep your muff under control. Oh, yeah. you do. It's getting a bit hairy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Joke. Um, yes, insert joke here. <laughs> <laughs> so just before we kick off, like, how is this movie actually doing as of today? Oh, well, I was going to say, who'd like to Dan, say this one? Dan, you're the one who notified us. Yeah, I was reading earlier. It's done $135 million in the domestic North American box office and at least a further $125 mil, uh internationally. So for a grand total of over $260 million in the first weekend. Fuck. Which absolutely show? annihilated some records. Oh, yeah. annihilated. It's, um, it's been more successful than any other Marvel movie Fox have done. In an opening Just weekend. Fox or including, yeah, no, 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 including just Marvel Fox, and Disney? But it's approaching Disney levels. Oh, really? Of success, yeah. yeah. Do, you reckon, um, do you reckon they'll overtake the entire earnings of Fantastic Four? Well, <laughs> well <laughs> I'd it say has, probably has, already has. I, I think I earn more than Fantastic Four yeah. did. Because <laughs> didn't Fantastic Four only hit the 50 million? So oh, I think you're it, kidding. Yeah, oh, it's, it's smashed it, yeah. yeah. And not only, yeah, it's smashing records. Highest, it's, I think uh, it's got the highest opening uh, for a R-rated film. Yes, that too. Ever. Yeah. yeah. Um, not just in comic, uh, comic book, but as in, in general. Any uh, does, rated does film. Does that include Robocop? Yeah. Wow. It includes, I think the 80 million on an opening weekend was the highest and it's 135, so. Yeah. And, and that's domestic. <laughs> an Obviously, yeah, that's the North American that's market. That's the North American yeah. market yeah. only. And so that's huge. So just as a yeah. quick prediction then, we're going to see Deadpool and the Fantastic Four. I'm going to see Deadpool and the Silver Surfer. Deadpool and Galactus. No, nah. <laughs> why not? Yeah. In the end, like five years down the track, like after well, five years in terms of actual releases, well, let's say, let's just say it, 15 years down the track, um, all we're going to end up seeing then is like not even Deadpool like a person in costume. It's just going to be a Photoshop just appearing in the corner. Yeah. yeah. Breaking the fourth wall, speaking yeah. to the audience, and then just going away. Or maybe he'll just be in the audience for screenings. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's his cameo. Holding oh. a cat and eating chimichangas. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we'll get started on this. All right, who's the most giddy I think that's Lee. Lee, you've yeah. been bringing right. on about this. I, I've been reading right, gonna... everything I can get my hands on in comic books for a long time for Deadpool. All right. So we'll start with you and uh, let's start with uh, the first topic, plot. Did it make sense and was it written well? I think 
I had a bit of think about the way it was uh, chopped backwards and forwards with a little bit of looking into the past, going back to the present, looking into the past again. And I think that was really just to give it a bit of variety. Otherwise, it would be an extremely linear movie. I think that was the only awkward part of the plot, having to jump backwards and forwards. And they had to rehash his origin again, which is you know a pain, but they made reference to, they made a lot of fun out of the fact that um, he's saying, this isn't the origin story I had in Wolverine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Starting again, that was shit. Really? Yeah. Well, it, it didn't, wasn't so verbose, but he did mention Wolverine. Oh, and he, I'm pretty sure they mentioned how bad it was. Yeah. Like yeah. There, there's yeah. a point where he goes. Oh, yeah. They're sewing his mouth shut. And he said, yeah, they tried that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, they definitely took a lot of swings. Yeah, a lot of swings. Oh yeah. yeah. So swings is in like um, Ridic- wide out ridicule- there jokes. You no, know, ridiculing um, all of the X Men history, like his previous incarnation. And don't forget in him as Green Lantern as well. They, he, he had they a hack. Really took the piss out of Hal Jordan. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And And there wasn't just that one liner we see in the thing. They actually have like a a baseball card of of the Green Lantern on screen. Wow. It sounds almost like as if they're they're having a play at the fact that he has been trying to get a comic book superhero for a while. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then they actually mention Ryan Reynolds in the middle of the movie. Really? Do you reckon Ryan Reynolds gets his um, his acting jobs for his stellar performances? (laughs) (laughs) No. No, He says it. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. 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 Oh, fuck. It was good. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, in plot wise, I think uh, they tried to keep it very simple. I think we were discussing that before we started recording. Yeah. And it, it's kept it very simple. And yeah. Oh, no, exactly. And I was going to say, and that's, I think, why it's actually such a good movie is because they didn't go, let's make this really complex, over the top Deadpool story that's not going to make a lot of sense and no one's going to really get unless you've read the comic book. Yeah. yeah they, mm. they played on some of the tropes of Deadpool, but they gave enough, I think, enough explanation. But because I'm so steeped in Deadpool now, I'm not sure 100 percent yeah like i don't know if they gave enough time to al the um, blind lady that he lived with yep mm, okay yeah. um when i say enough time like we didn't learn almost anything about her mm. no you don't learn a lot about uh you don't actually learn a lot about a lot of the characters aside from deadpool the main villain um his girlfriend and like yeah. really much mm. the key so the, the, the key characters the bartender i'm not quite sure who he was whether he actually has a normal uh, Deadpool backstory, and then the guy that played Bob. Bob is a massive character in the Deadpool universe, but they really only just gave him a, like a five second cameo. Bob. Mm. Bob. He was one of the henchmen that was fighting him in the last. Oh uh, yeah, remember he had a conversation off. with him when he was uh, being uh, subjected yeah, 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 yeah. to the torture. So Bob's a major character, but they only just sort of glanced off that one and kept going, which yeah. is it's a good callback, but it would have been confusing for the audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wait, who was Bob? Bob is Hydra Bob, right? right? He's a big character in the Deadpool universe where he's basically always on the enemy team, but he's so afraid of Deadpool yeah. that he does whatever Deadpool asks him to do. Uh-huh. And so he'll turn coat at any opportunity. And Deadpool beats the shit out of him on occasion, <laughs> yeah. but doesn't kill him. And so he knows that if he does what he's told, he won't die. Right. Um. And Ajax. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the the uh, mythology, was he not uh, another patient at the? Um... Well, he says yeah, he says he was a he was a previous patient. Yeah, he mentions it in passing, doesn't he? Yeah, but, he but says... that was originally where Deadpool met him, wasn't it? Him yeah, as a patient. So. Yeah, so there was a slight sort of muddling of the the mythology there, but yeah, it, it was basically uh, a quick retelling, condensed version. Yeah. Um, and they didn't say explicitly where they got the serum that he was being tested with. But well, we know from other Deadpool material that it was Wolverine. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It's the Mutant X program as well. Well, it was all part of the yeah, of, of the Weapon X uh, Sorry, program. Weapon X. Yeah. yeah, and that's where – it's actually funny. That's what, probably the one thing I did not like is that they kind of glanced over that. As in right. they didn't it's go, oh, what we're doing here. We, they're saying, oh, we're going to activate your mutant genes, which I'm a yeah. bit like, eh. Okay, but and they didn't go into how they're doing it and why. See, yeah. which was interesting because they did spend a lot of time in that sequence. Yes, mm. heaps. And, you know. and specifically they've spelled out in the Marvel comic universe that he's not a mutant. No, he's uh, artificially given powers. And, yeah. and Wolverine still um, put, keeps him at a distance, A, because they've stolen powers, and B, that he's not a real mutant. Yeah. Mm, and yeah. Magneto, again, doesn't 
pay any heed to him. As well, well, no, he, he wouldn't at all. Yeah. So yeah. So they they really muddied it. I think it was basically to get their claws into that character. Yep. And say this is a fox property. He is a mutant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he's. I mean, the thing is, he. I can't yeah. remember. Is it Fox that has the rights to the word mutant? Or whoever, yeah. They, is it Sony or Fox or... It's Fox. Um, is it the word mutant? It's not the word mutant. They've got the rights to the X-Men and X-Properties. So oh, every yeah. X-Property that there is. And because the word mutant is such a description of those characters, yeah. it's kind of tied to them. Right, so you yeah. couldn't have... In say, for example, a Marvel Studios film come out and say, "Here's a mutant with all of these well, yeah, great powers," yeah, because right. it implies um, that it's an X Man, yeah. an X Man. Here's right. Wanda and and Quicksilver. Um, that let's, are, let's not say that they're mutants. Mutant. Let's say let's that say they're, they're experimental spe- specials or yeah, yeah, yeah wonders. And- yeah, and they've been experimenting on them, but they didn't say they gave them their powers. Like, it was just left blank. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. And is that not the reason why Marvel at the moment have sort of put a uh, stop on uh, the X-Men comics, so to speak? Oh. Like, there's no new mu- mutants being created because they don't want to cede those properties over to Sony on, on the big screen? Oh, that's the conspiracy theory. Well. Yeah. Yeah, um, it the, plays out so far. Yeah, doesn't it? it's like well, I mean, the fact is now that they're actually doing in the comics, they've now created all of these uh, Inhumans because they're really plaguing the Inhumans, right? Yeah. Um, and that the they're what, getting ready for the Inhumans movie, aren't they? Well, they are. Yeah. Um, mm. But what actually creates the Inhumans, which is called Terrigen Mist, uh, is supposedly that's actually lethal to mutants. So that now really? the current storyline in the current comic books oh. is that the mutants I'm are up, dying. I'm not up yeah. to date. Um, oh yeah. I was just at the the launch of the Terrigen Mists, yes. so I've only read up to that point. Yep. So now it's all yeah. yeah. But anyway, so yeah, I thought, like I said, plot wise, just to go back to it, is that it's it because it was so simple, it flowed really well. Mm. And- you know what? I, I another thing I think is. It, if not for Ryan Reynolds and the other performances, it wouldn't have been a particularly inter- interesting plot. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it was definitely the characters' performances that sold it as a movie. Yeah, yeah. totally. And it and most of the time they didn't use big special effects. To are we going to move on to talking about special effects and stuff um, now? We can jump topic. I was going to just because uh, Dan mentioned the the characters' performances. That was my convenient segue. Yeah, there. I was going to yeah, say. Sorry. Look, <laughs> talking about that, I think we should move on to the next topic. So the actors did they did they work well together? And were their were their performances actually, I don't know, believable, comprehensible, necessary, <laughs> as believable as you can be in a, a movie like Deadpool? I think. Yeah, I really like the chemistry between Ryan Reynolds and TJ uh, Weasel. And yeah, Deadpool. yeah, I totally agree. I thought the chemistry between both of those guys, just the bit, the banter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this movie is just full of great banter. Oh yeah. You know, every actor just God, they bounce off each other. You can tell as simply scripted as it was. The characters had a very, you know, they knew their roles and the actors knew their roles and they played it very, very well. Yeah. Well, we know we know Ryan Reynolds has been having a lot of fun as Daredevil. Uh, I keep saying Daredevil, Deadpool. Yeah. yeah. Um, promoting, always getting in costume for the camera to do another promotional shot. Clearly, he's been wanting to do this movie for a while. Mm. Do it, we- was, it was so good at, in the beginning stages of Wolverine as playing the Deadpool character. Yeah. Before he got yeah. his powers, like they really played up the fact that he was already a trained assassin. Yeah. Mm. Whereas in this movie, they sort of don't really say much to do with it. He's he's just being a thug at this point. Um, no, they do mention that he's special forces. Yeah, but anyway, but they don't uh, really what, what play I was it up trying much. to get to was um, being that he's had a lot of fun with this off off camera and after filming. Do you th- do you suspect that all the actors would have had just as much fun making this movie? Does it come through in their performances? Yeah, uh, I think it does. And I think it has to, something to do with the fact that it's not a serious movie. Yep. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. as much as it's a, you know, well, I mean, I, when I say that, as in it's a serious Deadpool movie, it's still a lot of fun and tongue in cheek. Yeah, I think so almost, they have every, fun with it. almost every character gets a, a joke line. Everyone does. Yeah. Every yeah. single Even one. Even Ajax. I'm trying to think what basically just a couple of his lines. About yeah, what's my name sort of thing. That must have been pretty pretty yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Would you would I know this is sort of going off a slightly off topic, but would you say it's potentially a comedy, action comedy? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. totally. Um, one thing I would say about Ajax, I don't think he was that brilliant a bad guy. Like no, and, and they no, pointed think- that out in the intro. You know, it's like t- what was it? Typical British bad guy. Or yeah, something uh, or? yeah. Typical British villain. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think I was gonna uh, ma- like- mustache twirling. Type thing, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah, I actually yeah. mentioned that, didn't I? Mustache twirling, yeah, familiar. possibly. Yeah. 
But anyway, yeah, the the idea that in sorry, in my opinion, the last couple of Bond villains have been pretty lackluster as well. Right, okay. like often yeah. really good actors, but they're not given much to work with. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's the same sort of thing here. He he plays it really well, but he's not a very complex character. Yeah, there's just not much to it. Yeah. which I guess in the confines of this movie is all right because mm. you know you're doing the the origin story. He's really sort of there to move the the story along. You know, he's somebody that Deadpool has. You know, you know, to to aim his aggression at, and that's exactly right. He's the target of, uh, well, essentially, uh, he, you know, he is the the problem. Yeah, yeah. he is yeah. the problem of the of uh, of the flick, um, and so he's the lead up to the resolution. Mm. Um, yeah. And it's really all from Deadpool's point of view. So it could be just this is also a skewed version of reality. It's totally. his own little microcosm. Mm. Yeah. Like all of the people playing in it are are strange people that somehow ignore all of his comments uh, that don't really re- relate to their reality. Yeah. yeah, that's a very yeah cool. It's yeah. sort of, yeah, all seems to be from his point of view. But I reckon Dapinda, the taxi driver, has got to be one of my favourites. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he he good, turns yeah. into a nasty motherfucker yeah. uh, in yeah. the end, doesn't he? Uh, he was, I just, and the guy who played him, I just love it. He was so, yeah. so great. I think that's a common theme in the books that Deadpool has a bit of a, bad effect on the morals of the people that he hangs around with. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, just the fact that he's there going, <laughs> and I love it, you know, it's like, no, I can't believe you kidnapped this, um, your cousin Dependa. Great job. Yeah. Yeah. You, should, you, know, <laughs> I, you know, really, you, you should drop him off and not, and do anything rash. Kill him. <laughs> <laughs> it, the way you describe Deadpool's character, it's almost like as if he's kind of like the good conscious, bad conscience, all in one. Yeah, and it is. Yeah, yeah. It is definitely and vocal about it. It's definitely who he is in the comic book. So they've played that really well. Um, but they they did sort of. I don't want to say labor, but they emphasize the point that he does not identify as a superhero, mm-hmm. and pro- yep. probably never will. Yep. So there's that sort of moral ambiguity to it. Like he's not necessarily right. out for the greater good. He's out for what is good in his perspective at this current point in time. You right. know. So there's. So, yeah. but bringing it back to the the question. Did did the actors work well together? Did they perform? Yeah, like I good said, enough for this movie. Especially Weasel, T.J. Miller, and um, Ryan Reynolds. I was actually reading today. You know that scene where they're in the bar um, and he first reveals his face. Yeah. Apparently, they ad lit the the entire scene, and originally it was much much worse. <laughs> so much so that they had to actually stop and say, "All right, no, we can't put this in the movie." <laughs> <laughs> oh. so, and they're so, aiming for an R rating. Yeah, to say that about a Deadpool movie, to have something where they're like, no, okay, this is too far. So <laughs> obviously there was some great chemistry behind the scenes between, I, it, I between, hope, between those, those I two. I hope well. they put that in a deleted scene. Oh, oh God, yeah. Oh, you know they will. They'll be on the Blu-ray. Yeah. It's just, and they were. TJ Miller is, I mean, if anyone hasn't seen Silicon Valley, you're doing mm. yourself a disservice because he's fucking hilarious in that. Also, if you haven't seen the movie Extract, which is also another Mike Judge, you're doing yourself a disservice because he is fucking hilarious in those films. He's he so good. funny oh, in that show. But yeah, just, and I think the way, even with the girlfriend as well, um, who's played by Marina, I can never get her last name right. She was in Firefly. She's currently in Gotham. She's married to the guy who plays Gordon Gotham. Anyway. Back her in. Thank you very much. Like they're bantered together as a couple. Yep. It's yep. just great. And she feeds off him and I he think feeds off her. The it's only well thing I didn't like about her performance was that last scene where she sort of accepts him mm. and. Uh, that seemed really forced. Just that line where she says, um, "Oh, you got like you got to live in a house," like where she's finally oh, playing right. into his banter again, yeah, uh, yeah, rather yeah. than just yelling at him or punching him. Yeah, they were doing that. You know, who can you know who, who can come under? Who had the worst childhood? Game? Yeah, they're trying yeah, to outdo each other for yeah, yeah trying to outdo each other. But yeah, it, that that just that one line just went. Oh, that didn't come out right. It did feel a little rushed, didn't it? Yeah, they yeah. could have had another. You know, 30 seconds mm. of her deliberating it, but it was just that. And she couldn't help smiling. Yeah. I was like, he played dead for more than a year, didn't he? Yeah, like, well, seriously. Yeah. I'd years. be annoyed. I'm pretty sure she said years. Well, actually, yeah, I think it was a year, because, but anyway, but exactly, or a year and a bit. But yeah, and like even the banter between him and, you know, Colossus and, uh, 
what's the name? Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Yeah, yeah he went, oh, What a is, name. He goes, yeah. That is the greatest name I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can we swap? That was it. Yeah. <laughs> Can we swap? And, uh, but, you know, even though that was a CG character and they still kind of, I think they had that going well. Oh, but that, and that fight yeah. scene between them. God, anyway, uh, that, we probably talk about that when we talk about well, special effects and stuff. Well, I was, I was just going to say, since you bring it up, like, um, so what was the technical aspects of the movie? So, camera work, music, sound, all that sort of stuff. Well, it opens with an amazing sort of frozen scene, which was the the one that was leaked in the the test footage, right? With the the car. Whoever um, leaked that was over. a freaking genius. They yeah, knew exactly yeah. what they were doing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there was yeah. no question about it. So yeah, from the get go, it opens up in this awesome sort of frozen moment, pans through it as the credits roll. So right. from the get go, you know, you you thrown like with these amazing effects in your face and it was so really it, cool just so we're clear is this the scene where he is in the promo of the director saying this is what i can do for this mm-hmm. movie yeah it's like um is the it black, the highway the scene black where SUV, SUV, the highway scene yeah, right yes. and he's he, yeah. he's uh, at this point i think he's just driven it into the guardrail with his foot and then mm-hmm. the whole thing is starting to spin and, and he, what they've actually done is there's a bike rider coming underneath and he grabs the bike rider's underpants and rips them up and gives him oh, an atomic kidding. wedgie and he's holding death. him yeah. like in the air as, yeah. with the momentum it's fucking really well <laughs> yeah. done it's okay. an, so, he, he kills the guy with a wedgie yeah. <laughs> And the so, great thing is, so there's all these little reveals about the scene in this opening sort of uh, panning shot. And right. then once it goes back to the action, you actually see where all these things come into it. Okay. So at one point, there's a cigarette lighter uh, flying towards a guy's face. Right. And you're like, what? And then once you actually see the fight scene, you see it's because Deadpool threw it, threw a, put it pushed it into his forehead and then put it in, put his, it in his mouth. mouth. So, yeah, I normally yeah. don't say this, but don't swallow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that that scene is right at the start of the film. Yes. So the scene that everyone is already aware of. They get it yeah. out of the way. And I guess that's why they did a lot of chopping backwards and forwards. Yeah. Because they wanted of, to address that. Yeah, that was sort of the major set piece for the first half of the movie. Yeah. And I also I was also wondering whether they reused footage and they had problems okay. matching it up with the rest of the movie. Yeah. Like if they actually had that pre-recorded and they were trying to work with it that it didn't match the film quality that they were doing or something like that. They have reshot that scene though. They have? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I was wondering Because they've added sections in because I've actually rewatched the leaked footage and it's yeah. a lot shorter, it's a lot simpler. Mm. And yeah, then yeah. in the part that we see in the beginning of that movie, it's a lot crisper. There's added fight yeah, parts okay. in. So they have done more. I was wondering more, like, if that was a reason why they've it, actually yeah. done the chop backwards and forwards yeah. in time, but mm. yeah, plays so, out all right. Beyond the, the opening scene, comments on the, the rest of the special effects? I thought the special effects were... I mean, I didn't. Okay, if I was going to say one bad thing, I thought Colossus looked too fake the entire mm, time. Yeah, okay. as fake as what he cool. was in the X Men film. No, okay, or you know, films. you know when you see him in X Men Two. Yep. When he first comes in, to click, you know, starts clicking on all the the metal skin. I actually liked that. I thought that appearance looked really good. He was shiny. He was nice. Yes, it, I was going to say. Yeah. It was Colossus. Mm. In this, he looks. <sighs> he's he's a dull polished aluminium color yeah yeah and, and it, it's not shiny and i think that's to save on cg budget because calculating reflections yeah is a freaking nightmare oh, absolutely. yeah okay yeah. fair and enough so that's all your cg money blown in a few yeah. scenes but it you're looking meant- like you're talking like days to weeks to render individual frames for something like yeah, that because yeah it's ridiculous. You're not, you, you've got to calculate all of these extra reflections and yeah. extra things going on in the scene which probably isn't recorded in 3D. Mm. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. you've got to, imp- you've got one, to import One thing all I wanted to ask yeah. is, considering this is an action flick, how are the fight scenes actually choreographed? Are they smooth? Are they jagged? Is the camera in your face? There's only a few uh, close it. scenes. I think mm. I, I, where I normally complain, there's only a few close shots and the rest is nice and clear. And it's, it's, a lot of it's got a lot of good weight to it. Yep. Like you feel yeah, the definitely. impact when Colossus and Angel fight. Yep. Mm. You feel some of the, the other impacts like, when he gets hit in the nuts, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah when when uh, Deadpool tries that on him first and tries oh, to get him in the God. nuts. Oh God! Okay, that's <laughs> actually one of the. That was probably the one scene where every time he did that, I cringe. So, do we spoil it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do we spoil it? Come yeah, on. Go for it. So fucking. Klaus is trying to get Deadpool away, you know, you should join the X-Men and all this other stuff. As in, yeah, don't kill this yeah, guy. Yeah, don't kill this guy, you should be good. Anyway, Deadpool goes, nah, screw this, goes, um, goes to punch him in the nuts. 
breaks his hand straight away, Ow. right? And you just hear, and he goes, oh, so he's got one loose hand. So then yeah, he he's goes, going like, yeah. and, and it's yeah. flipping it backwards, backwards and, forwards. and forwards, and you hear it cr- cracking and everything. Oh, he's like, oh. obviously, that's not good. good. Yeah. And so then he goes to hit him again in the face with the other hand, breaks that hand, same thing. He's like, oh, God, what's going on? He's only got his feet left, so he goes and then to kick him, bang, a fly kick, fly kick, snaps his you know shin and fibula in half, it bang, he's all. So sick. it essentially becomes the Black Knight from. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <Monty Python. laughs> yeah. He's basically got one good leg yeah. left, and, and yeah. I think at one point he even says, "You know what they say about the one-legged man, the ass kicking contest? Yeah. Doesn't he go up and kick him with the other one and break that one? No, too? no, he's still got one good leg for his final move. <laughs> yeah, 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 and." I think maybe we should leave that one, but you're right. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. we'll leave yeah. that one. But his final move in that scene is well worth the whole price of admission. Yeah, yeah. guarantee you. All right, I look forward to that then. Yeah. So yeah. camera work um, executed well. Yeah, they did some really good yeah. slow mo. Yeah. They mm. did some really good impact and like you were saying with impact, it felt like a brawl. Like it was a heavy brawling kind of fight scenes, yeah. and so you, when you saw him. In a one sweeping shot, I think at one point he's going down a set of stairs, taking guys out. It was perfect and it looked beautifully choreographed, beautifully shot, mm. yeah. but at the same time clunky and it was worth it. Yeah, and I think weight is a, is a good thing to uh, – a good way to describe it. Yeah, it actually feels like there's uh, there's weight behind the punches and behind the, the, the hits. Yeah, yeah, like Negasonic Teenage Warhead. She's yes. only got a yep. few times where she really uses that power, but each of them feel like they've got some – Amazing impact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. she's yeah. strong. Mm. Yeah, and she's only just sort of flexing her muscle a bit. Like, yeah. you can yeah. see she's got a lot more potential. Like her last strike was ten times bigger by accident. Yeah, yeah, mm. exactly. Is it because she hasn't discovered her powers? Yeah, she's pretty young. She's meant to be okay. only like she closes her mentor. Yeah, so mm. she's probably just learning. So she would have been like fifteen, sixteen. If yeah, yeah. Mm. right, okay. So moving on, actually, sound, sound design. So considering there's a lot of like blade work and there are. Um, characters such as Colossus with metal movements. Mm-hmm. What, what was what was the sound stage like? Oh. Actually, funnily enough, now you mentioned that you, I didn't, I didn't notice that much. Yeah, I was going to say there wasn't that much sword work really, as far as sound goes. You do because there was a lot of well, there was a lot of like uh, swords into flesh. Yeah. So you know they're they're not like it's no not like sword has fights. A sword. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not enough. this guy's now metal on metal sort of thing. Yeah. So it was wasn't anything sort of standout ish. No, I no. think some but of I think the that's to bigger credit. explosions came out well in Atmos. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll use I, the, I was telling you guys before there was a really young kid in my session and there was a big boom early on and he actually screamed and went fuck <laughs> <laughs> like it was uh it was very entertaining <laughs> yeah and you do hear courses like clink a little bit as he moves yeah. no it, mm. it, it's definitely passable but i wouldn't say they're going to be nominated for a oh no award. it's not like oh my god amazing sound <laughs> yeah 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 so there was nothing necessarily special but it's definitely you know hollywood quality mm. okay good all right so now that we've gone through the major topics, it's just open floor. Anything you wanted to talk about that you missed out before, now's the time. Yeah, all right. So I think I've pretty much covered everything I wanted to talk about. I think, yeah, they didn't give enough time to some of the characters, but that's, I suppose, fair enough. They've got to really focus on Deadpool. Yeah, mm. I think probably one of the biggest things, though, I would say is that when it comes to character development for really any anyone in that movie, mm. there's none. Yeah, Deadpool. Like you're it, saying, Deadpool himself, he has zero character development at all. The only thing that changes for him is that he gets powers. Yeah, that's it. And his character, though, still the same. His personality, still the same. And if what you're saying is about his training, is you know, yeah, he was already trained. He was already he trained. Really, yeah. he gains a little bit of extra strength, but not much. Yeah, like so, he doesn't actually develop as a character. You know, even when he finally has to reveal himself. He only doesn't do it because, you know, it's the right thing to do. He mm. does it because he has no choice. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. it's kind of there's no no character development at all. But at the same time, it doesn't need it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You know? He's got a very specific role in the comic book universe and I think he's taken it on here as well. Like that's mm. his role is to be the comic relief to some pretty sick and disgusting things. Well, that's one thing, yeah, that they did slightly change too. The reason he gets more insane and more um, wild in the comic books is because the cancer is eating away his brain. Yeah, they may touch on it again later. Yeah, you yeah. never know. It may play into, yeah. That because, be yeah, sequel. like he... Mm-hmm in the comic books, never really maintains a relationship. And if there is a sequel, there's got to be a reason why. That's what interested me too, huh? Yeah, the fact that it ends with him reconciling with Vanessa. 
Because correct me if I'm wrong, but in the the comic books, he stays away from her because he doesn't want her to come to harm. I haven't read that far back. Okay, yeah. yeah. If I remember correctly, that's the reason why, yeah, he broke off the relationship quite early on so that she wouldn't be involved in all the shit that he is. Could, so It could be the filmmaker's decision to humanise him a little bit more because, I mean, he is mm. a cold-blooded kid, killer after all. Yeah, I true. mean, we see it in action movies all the time and there is some sort of saving grace whether they're killing people to save someone's daughter or so forth. But in this case, he's just a hired... He's, he's a mercenary, so yeah. he's just killing it, anyone for the sake of killing. Yeah. In in this, they gave him that, that plot of trying to save his looks he was mm. told by ajax that he can actually get his looks restored which is then to get his girlfriend back right and yeah. then she gets threatened so that's so, where yeah, it, that's where it sort of climaxes to yeah it. it obviously needed an, an emotional payoff at the end yeah but uh it'll be interesting to see what they do with the character moving forwards because they've already confirmed number two yes yeah, so I, I hear that this is in the uh post credit sequence yes yes it is and uh, it's not in a suggestive, ooh, who's this, who's that. They apparently just straight out tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we didn't have the budget to film anything else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not like we got the, the money to bring Samuel L. Jackson in here. Well, yeah, exactly. Something. It's yeah. like, what do you think? He's going to come in being all swash and everything? Yeah. No, go. With his eye patch. I just love yeah. it. He also, there, he's going, why are you still here? Go home. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know that's from Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller's Day I Off. I thought it was fucking yeah. familiar. It's almost uh, word the, for word. And that's also um, that's explains goes, the dress. <laughs> yes. The yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, one, one question yeah. I did want to ask is, in the comics and and any media with Deadpool, it's very much also breaking fourth wall. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How, how much do they do it in this movie and is it executed well or is it too much? Oh, constantly and... Yeah, it's, pretty it's much consistently. <laughs> and I think that's... Probably a clue as to what you were saying about what it does to his brain. Mm. Uh, he doesn't make any fourth wall jokes when he's not mutated, when he's mm. not oh, Deadpool. Oh, okay, yeah. That's not a bad point. Actually, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah I through was all... waiting for it. I was looking for it. Yeah, yeah. throughout yeah. that entire section when he's not Deadpool, he does not make any. He only ever interacts with characters. Yeah, mm. so he is actually oh. starting to lose his marbles. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's a good Okay, point. good, yeah. yeah. Wow, I didn't mm. even So they're this. using the audience as part of his uh, psychosis. Yeah, yeah, and so, and, yeah, and just sort of saying, uh, I need a quick bit of exposition, uh, and then he'll just sort of give it to you and says, oh, no, who says it? Is it Weasel that says something? Well, that's a good bit of exposition. Yeah, I think it probably yeah, was. Yeah, I think it is. Weasel, yeah. Weasel just says it like he's going over to see the, whatever Agent Smith they call him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes over to see it and he says, well, that's a good bit of exposition. And yeah, he yeah. sort of turns around and goes back to what he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, so he, he's it, not the only character it, to break the fourth wall. Well, well I don't no, know. He says it to himself. Weasel, yeah, Weasel doesn't directly address the camera. Okay. Yeah, so, but he, yeah. Sort of, he sort of says... Yeah, go and speak to him. He says, that'll help the story along yeah. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I just went, hey. <laughs> so it's almost like a rob of Deadpool's right to break yeah. break that wall. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Which is, it probably was an ad-lib thing. You yeah. Know, and they've kept it in. Yeah. Well, by the sounds of it, those two, yeah, ad-libbed a lot of lines. Yeah. But, but back to your question, Carlos, as to whether or not that was excessive or anything, I don't know what you guys think, but no. I think if you're going to go into a Deadpool movie, you have to expect that. You know, I'm, I'm just curious because yeah. I know it's something that he does. Yeah. And, and it's, it, I wonder if it's a question of when it gets to a point where they've used it too much, maybe if we continue using it, then like, it becomes a norm. Yeah. It's not like something in... I'm having a guess. I can't remember who framed Roger Rabbit, but the idea that you'd in in a four panel comic or something that you'd lean over one of the frames and grab something from the wrong part of the story. Yeah, right. Yeah. They don't do that. It's just to progress the story and help the story keep flowing. Okay. Mm. A little bit of his internal monologue is directed at you. Right. Okay. Mm. Yeah, or, you know, like it would be an off-the-cuff comment about, about the fact it, that it is a movie. Uh, or about mm. pop culture. Or about pop culture, which is very much in the comic because he does, he like in the comic there are points when he realises he is a fictional character mm. and mm. therefore makes those ki- same kind of um, uh, comments in it. So it's it was a good nod. But yeah, like I, I just, yeah, I really liked it actually. Every time they did it, I thought it was fucking great. Yeah, because the reason I say that, um, because uh, a few uh, reviewers have come out and said, yeah, it's it's too much sort of thing. Well, it's like, what did you expect? Yeah, you yeah. Know? <laughs> All right. So on that note, I think we should do our roundup and ratings. So Heath, we'll start with you. Okay. Look, I was trying to, I 
you know, I would love to say this is a five star movie because it's perfect and all this other stuff. I really Good enjoyed it. Banana movie. I've been off for a few <laughs> weeks. Um, <laughs> But no, look, all in all, uh, it's a great movie. I really recommend it. I really want to see it again. I'm going to give it... I'm actually going to give it three and a half. Three and a half bananas. Three and a half bananas. Um, If it had more character development and Colossus looked better, (laughs) I'd probably give it five. So three and a half bananas. All right. So Colossus for you just wasn't quite right. It just didn't look like right. I just think it looked too fake. Um, And if it looked a little bit more realistic i really would have enjoyed right. liked him more i mean i still loved it with every scene he was in but he just mm. he looked fake to me okay fair enough dan um i thought it was great uh i definitely want to see it again because there was quite a few times where i was laughing so much at some of the jokes i missed the next one <laughs> so <laughs> i totally agree yeah so that alone agree, like yeah. yeah for me sort of raised it uh just that extra level like the yeah the fight scenes were great they were over the top gory as hell you know like nice. it's it's what we've been wanting for from a, a comic book movie for a while but you haven't been able to see it because the uh, traditional comic book movies have a family audience yeah. um so yeah it was great great fun from start to finish I think the pacing was a little bit off sort of with his backstory and when he was in the, the lab, you know, getting treated and that. They, they could have done more with that, the, the exposition there, but I wouldn't necessarily fault it that much because of that. So um, I'm going to say four bananas, but I will point out that I'm wary of what they'll be able to do with the sequel. I worry that they've they've exhausted the the genre, if you like, with the first movie, so I don't know... What's going to happen down I'm, the line? I'm yet to see it, so it will be interesting to say to see how much they push the envelope. Yeah, and to see, like, I mean, let's face it, sequels always have to push the envelope a little bit further. Mm. Well, that's what I mean. I just I don't really see any room for that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it was over the top in a good way, but uh, yeah. So I don't know. I guess we'll see. All right. So four bananas. No worries, Lee. I, I was looking forward to this so much. I. I'm trying to temper my rating just with a bit of, you know, a bit of fact about the movie. So how could I improve? How would I want the movie improved? As you said, with CG, Heath, like the CG could have been better. Storyline-wise, they played with a couple of the core concepts of Deadpool. Maybe they've left enough room for themselves to expand in the future. Bit worrying about sequels and stuff, yeah. I think they actually need to give it a proper budget now they did this one Mm. relatively speaking for a comic book movie they did it fairly cheap the next one they've got to give it a proper budget and make the story that big as well actually give him something to do and i think if they use cable they can actually make a proper sort of x-men size movie Mm -hmm. buddy cop yeah it could be a good (laughs) buddy cop kind of movie well time traveling buddy cop don't forget too so it would be good there's plenty of scope there there was um there's a good sequence i think it's called messiah or something but yeah it's a good sequence where his time travels busted but his teleportation's not and then they get tied together in that teleportation thing Mm -hmm. and they both have to transport with the other person and then deadpool steals the the controls and then he's in charge so rating rating wise now i'm gonna give it four and a half Four and a half. Yeah, I really wanted it. I really wanted it. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> you really wanted it. I really wanted it. I wanted all of Deadpool. Give it to me now. Um, yeah, I think I think if they if they can uh, just take Deadpool as an example, I think what people were saying before Deadpool came out was that we'd hit peak superhero movie, and we people are almost tired of it now. Yeah. If they take Deadpool's example about not having to stick with the big explosion formula of superhero movies. There's a lot of character development, like the way that we've seen some of the TV ones like Daredevil and Jessica Jones. They've got a lot of good stuff in terms of the emotional side of superheroes. They're not all perfect. Yeah, They're not all out to save the universe. They can do stuff on a much smaller scale. I think that's you know why I liked Ant-Man so much as well. That right. it was a much smaller little plot, deal with something very small, and it has a... A significance for that character. Nice. Mm. All right. So that that is our look at Deadpool. And uh, as I said at the start of the uh, the episode, I will view this movie before the next episode, and I will give my rating and review. And uh, until then, we are the Theater Gorillas. My name is Dan. Uh, oh, my name is Dan. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I am a little tired. I think it was because I was looking directly at you. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
So um, he's Dan, I'm Carlos. I'm Lee. And I'm Heath. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week, guys. See ya. <laughs> oh, and stay tuned for the end of the theme song to find out what the clue is for this week's movie. Who am I? Bye. Bye. Yeah. So you've stayed on to find out what this week's movie, Who Am I, reveal is, and it is, of course, Groundhog Day. Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ. what was that? That was Heath demonstrating that he could peak the microphone. (laughs) (laughs) So Groundhog Day from 1993, starring Bill Murray, Andy McDowell, Chris Elliott, and a whole bunch of others. Great movie, full of fun, and just a little bit endearing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. What movie is it again? Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. Fuck, man. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next week. See ya. See ya. Groundhog Day. Shut up! <laughs> this podcast is recorded and produced by Theatre Gorillas. Edited by... Dan... Uh, no, I'm- <laughs>